morning to 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Chronicles is in the Old Testament. 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Our theme for the year is Thy Kingdom Come. And the idea that we're looking at here is being in subjection to the King, to God as King. Uh, twice this week I heard different ones in different contexts say basically I don't like anyone telling me what I have to do. And I thought to myself, you know, that's common to man. We all feel that way. And for us to yield ourselves to God is to go against ourself and yield to God. Uh, I was going to have us sing that last song for the invitation uh, this morning. I thought, no, let's, we, we need to be in submission to God before the message, not just after the message. Uh, thy kingdom come. And I particularly want to apply this passage this morning to my family in God's kingdom. It, it's not particularly about that, but we're going to apply it to that. Second Chronicles chapter 14 is about a, a king named Asa. I, I've never liked his name. I've, I've always thought uh, that would be a hard name to say and <laughs> hard name to handle. But uh, the point this morning is who is king in your life? Who is the king in your life? Uh, the Bible talks about the the entrance to God's kingdom is by the new birth. Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said, you must be born again. And he said that our purpose as part of his kingdom is to worship him and honor him, to be like him, and to be salt and light in our world. You know, to, to, to be different than the kingdom of the world and to be someone that... that that can be a light and can be, uh, have a different taste than, than the world so that people can be turned to the Lord. You know, my life, my church, my family all need to be subject to the king. And the example this morning in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 14, let's start reading in, in verse 1. We'll read a fair, fair portion here. 2 Chronicles 14 verse 1. So Abijah slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days, the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places, and brake down the images, and cut down the groves, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers, and to do the law and the commandment. Also, he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. For he built fenced cities in Judah, for the land had rest, and he had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities, and make about them walls and towers, gates and bars, while the land is yet before us. Because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him, and he hath given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of men that bare targets and spears, out of Judah, 300,000, and out of Benjamin that bare shields and drew bows, 200 and fourscore thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. And there came out against them Zira, the Ethiopian, with an host of a thousand thousand, that's a million, and 300 chariots, and came unto Marisha. Then Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephatha and Marisha. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. I'm going to stop reading there. Uh, you might say, what does this have to do with family? Well, it doesn't have to do exactly with family. We could apply it to country. We're going to look mainly at our own personal walk with the Lord. But, you know, because of King Asa, God blessed Judah. He blessed them with rest. You know, that's a, that's a real blessing. He also blessed them when war came. Because Asa uh, turned to God and said, Lord, it's up to you what happens here. We'll do our part, but we're, we're counting on you. And you might ask yourself, well, why did God bless? What was it that brought godliness to Judah? I, 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 like, I, I like to use the word revival. 
godliness, revival uh, to that nation. Well, God sends a prophet to explain to them in 2 Chronicles 15. Let me read the first few verses. <clears throat> and the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Just stop reading there. God tells him, I'm blessing you because you've, you've humbled yourself before me. You, you've sought me. Asa led his nation to know God's word. Now the main person you can affect in this world is you. <laughs> you may not have the power or the position to affect your family or your country or your church even, but you can affect you. And what you do will make a difference to others. Uh, this nation had been without God's word being taught. Did you notice that as uh, the prophet talked there in verses 3 and 4? For a long season, Israel had been without the true God, without a teaching priest, without law. Listen, folks, we cannot know God by our thinking. You're not going to know God by just thinking about things. You have to think the thoughts of God. God has to reveal himself. God is just so far above us that uh, we just can't even imagine. Uh, God puts it this way in Isaiah 55. He says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Uh, Asa led them to get back to God's word and to know the Lord. And, and you know, for, uh, for a person to know the Lord... It has to be by faith. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, by God's word. That's how we know. That's how we can be saved. In fact, Peter, God puts it this way in, in Peter 1, 1 Peter 1, he says, being born again by the word of God. I left out a little bit there. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. You know what that corruptible seed is? It's your ideas and my ideas. We're not born again by a corruptible seed, by thoughts that we just come up with. Listen, just because I think something or you think something doesn't make it very important. <laughs> All right? Uh, God says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And then later he says, the word of the Lord endureth forever. If you want eternal life, it's got to be based upon the eternal word. And that's where, where Asa went. He brought Israel, Judah actually, back to God's word. Judah turned to God's word and were blessed. Well, how can, how can you and your family know God's word? That's, that's one of the points I want to get across to you this morning. You know, he did, God did it for a nation. Surely he can do it for a family. <laughs> yeah, he can do it for you as an individual. And that's where it starts. Uh, personal devotions. Now, I, I use the word devotions. Probably some people, you know, think, what's that? Yeah. Devotions, it just means a time that you spend with the Lord. Reading the Bible, praying, thinking. You know, just a time when you, you spend with God. Uh, right now, over the years I, I've used different methods, but right now I'm, I'm reading alternatively a book of the Old Testament and then a book of the New Testament. I take it chapter by chapter, and I have a notebook, and... After I've read, I write in that notebook what I believe God has said to me. Now, different people use different methods. I find that helpful to me. Just to force myself to think, well, what has God actually said? I don't want to just say, oh, I read my Bible. What would you read? I don't know. <laughs> You've done it, so have I. Uh, I want to know, well, what has God said to me today? And then I pray. I pray for you. I pray for things that God brings to mind, but I also make a list because I know my mind is not always going to be thinking of, of, of all the right things that I need to remember. Uh, another way your family can know God's Word is by family devotions. A time when you as a family uh, spend some time with the Lord. We had friends. Uh, they're the ones who taught me to drink coffee. A uh, Dutch family we used to, used to stay with occasionally. When they finished their meal, particularly the evening meal, they bring out the Bibles, they bring out the hymnals, 
They'd sing a song, they'd read a portion of scripture, talk about it, pray, and it didn't take long, but they had family devotions. Our family used to do it in the morning. Now, this was a real sacrifice for my wife. My wife is not a morning person, uh, and that's fine. Uh, but she would get up, and, and it was usually pretty early, and after we'd have breakfast, we would read from the Bible. Our kids were little, and uh, we usually had a, a verse of the week that we were memorizing. We had a missionary of the week we were praying for, and we just spent time around God's Word. We didn't take a long time. It wasn't hard or anything, and our goal was for them to have that as a habit of life, and as they got older, then to have their own personal devotions, their own time with, with the Lord, and it was great. It was, it was very helpful. But you know, one of the Besides just things that you can do personally as a family, one of the best tools God's given you is your church. Listen, uh, there are people who spend hours and hours and hours preparing to teach you God's Word. Uh, some of you are cooks. Uh, you know what it's like to spend a day or two preparing a meal. Well, listen, that's what a person does when they present a message. Uh, they have prepared their hearts. They've prepared themselves. They've, uh, they've worked hard. I, let me tell you, I get excited about preaching. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm disappointed afterwards. <laughs> but you know, before I preach, I always think, oh, this is, this is going to be good. God can use this. Uh, because it's God's Word. And, and you need to be a part of, of your church. And I don't just mean coming once in a while. I mean coming all the time. Uh, making it your church. Uh, for a family, schooling is important. Kids spend a long time in school. Now, not everybody can afford to go to Christian school, and not everybody can do homeschooling. But listen, it, it's very important you have a, a, your hand on your kids' schooling. Uh, that's a, a place that can be used to turn them to or from uh, the Lord. But what we're saying here is there, there are ways that we can turn our hearts to God's Word. And we can turn our family. If you're the head of a family, listen, you make sure that your family is in church and that, that, they're, that they're reading the, the Bible and that you're reading the Bible as a family. You need to have a working plan to know God's Word. You need to have a working plan for your family to know God's Word. Asa led Judah to know God's Word. As well, he led them to what you might call biblical separation. To live holy lives. And let me say this. You can't follow God's word and not have a change. You can't follow God's word and live however you want. You know, if we say, yes, I believe God's word and I'm going to follow God's word, that means that when it disagrees with you, you're the one that's got to change. <laughs> don't, don't cut that page out, all right? Uh, follow God's word. In, in 2 Chronicles 15, verse 8. He mentioned this earlier also, but it says, When Asa heard these words, the prophet had spoken to him, and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and out of the cities which he'd taken from Mount Ephraim, and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. Asa made some changes because of, of God's word. And, you know, for us as Christians... There has to be some changes. We don't just come out of the, the womb uh, perfect examples of, of the Christian life. Uh, we've got to make changes. Some things have to go. There was things that uh, Asa had to get out of their nation. Some things have to come in. In the New Testament, he talks about put off and put on. Uh, you know, in our personal life, uh, there's just some things that, that need to change. Let me read you a portion of Scripture. Uh, I think the easiest way is, you can turn there if you'd like, Ephesians 4, verse 17. I'm, I'm going to read quite a bit here. And uh, just, I won't even hardly make any comments. These are just some things where God says, these are some areas you need to get rid of, these are some things you need to put on. Ephesians 4, verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you've heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, 
that you put off concerning the former conversation. The word conversation means manner of life. Put off the, the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Then he begins to list some specifics. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the, things which, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Wow, that, that's a lot of things there, isn't there? But what he's saying is, when you, when, when you trust the Lord, when you're going to live by God's word, there's going to be a change in your life. And the change needs to be as God directs you, as God shows you what's right. L listen, there is never a time as a Christian that it's right to lie. There's never a time when it's right to steal. And we just, uh, in our minds, we could work it out, but God won't, uh, won't give you an excuse. He won't give you a slip for that one. Uh, in our personal life, we need to turn to the Lord. We need to turn to his word. Uh, we need to, to live biblical separation, holiness. That needs to be true in our family as well. That gets a little more difficult because there, there's, one more, there's more than one person in a family. Now, when you get married, that's a family. Husband and wife, that's a family, all right? And uh, then you add to your family. You start having children. And some add one, two, ten, twelve. You know, we, we know people with, with lots of kids. Family. And, and the more people you have, uh, uh, the more complicated it gets to make sure you're all headed in the right direction. Uh, we, we got home from church one time and, uh, let's see, one, two... I'm sure we had three kids when we went to church. <laughs> We'd left one of them at church. Uh, you know, it, it, it's easy to get a little bit confused sometimes. But as a family, uh, we need to head in the direction of following the Lord. And a lot of that has to do with who's, who's leading and who's following. Uh, someone mentioned one time the idea of a family culture. A family culture. Families have, have a culture, just like a, a nation would. It, it involves mainly three things. What you allow, what you don't allow, and what you demonstrate. Now, you're around families. There are some families that I wouldn't want to be part of. You know, they're vile. They're, they're mean. They're nasty. Uh, that's not the culture you want in your home. You know, what you allow, what you don't allow, and what you demonstrate. You know, as, as a dad, it's, it's so important for me to demonstrate the love of God. Not just to say, listen, kids have a, a hypocrisy meter. <laughs> they know when you're just saying something and not doing it. Uh, you've got to live uh, the Christian life. Uh, some things have to go. Some things have to be added. Uh, he talked about renewing the altar there in, in verse 8. In, in 2 Chronicles uh, 15 and, and verse 18, uh, he says, he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and vessels. Uh, th there was things that they, they brought back in because that was God's. That belonged to the Lord. Uh, you, you know, family holiness, family separation starts with personal separation. It starts with you. Uh, you can't affect completely everyone in your family but you can do what's right, and that will help them. Uh, let me ask you this question. What is it that's keeping you from serving the Lord? Now, it, it's not your family. What, what about you? Revival has to start with you. It has to start with me. You know, we can say, oh, I had a bad upbringing. We all, we all had a bad upbringing. Come on. <laughs> uh, that's not the problem. The problem is, who are we looking to? Who are we trusting? Whose word are, are we living by? I think a good way to illustrate it is this. Just picture yourself in a, in a, drawing a circle around yourself. Now, for you to be right with God, what are you going to need to push out of that circle? And what are you going to need to bring in? 
Yeah, there, there's going to be some things. Every life has things that are not pleasing to the Lord. And we need to let the Lord, you know, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. There's things we need to put off as an individual. And there's things we need to put on. I mean, how many of us have said, oh, you know, I, I, I want to know God's word. I want to be more faithful. I want to, well, you got to start somewhere. You got to actually start. If there's going to be revival, if there's going to be godliness in our families, it needs to start with you. It needs to start with me. Uh, bring inside what, what God wants you to have. Asa led his nation to know God's word. He led them to live holy lives. And Asa also led them to trust God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and, and verse 10, that sounds much the same as what we've been talking about, but... 2 Corinthians 15 and, and verse 10, Corinthians, Chronicles. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the 15th year of the reign of Asa, and they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they'd brought, 700 oxen and 7,000 sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. See, this wasn't just something Asa said now, Nation, you need to follow the Lord. Now, Asa followed the Lord. And they entered into a covenant together to follow the Lord. Asa was willing to be led of God. Look at chapter 14, verse 11. It's where Asa is praying. He's faced by a million-man army. This would have been scary. This would have been kind of like facing the... Uh, the All Blacks, you know, uh, they get out there and, ooh, you know, there's been a million men from Ethiopia. And here's their army. I think he listed about five, you know, about half of what the other army had. And he cries out to God and says, God, you don't have to, you don't have, to have a big army to defeat them. We're, we're willing to trust you. you know, what a blessing it was for his nation to see that. In chapter 15, the end of verse 9, it says, they saw that the Lord his God was with him. People saw his testimony. People saw how he, he trusted the Lord in his prayers, in his actions. You know, uh, he even, if you look down at um, verse 16 of chapter 15, concerning Maacah, the mother of Asa, uh, the king, he, he removed her from being queen because she'd made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idols and stamped it and burnt it at the brook Kidron. Listen, even his mom... <laughs> Uh, she didn't, you know, he didn't excuse her for worshiping idols. He said, as a nation, we're not worshiping idols, mom. <laughs> that, that's pretty tough, you know. Uh, some of you know what it's like to deal with a mother. Uh, we need faith. We need to be an example of faith. Revival requires faith in God. And his nation, his, his family, his people saw it uh, in his life. And you know, first of all, we need saving faith. A person needs to come to a point in their life when they trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. We talked earlier about how Jesus said you must be born again. It's a big change when a person trusts Christ. And the way we come to Christ, the Bible says, is by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. He says it's not of works. Not of works lest any man should boast. It's by faith in Christ, and faith is believing what God has said, believing what God has done. And God says we're all sinners and deserve to go to hell. Now, we don't like that. We all think we're pretty good. But God says there's none righteous. No, not one. You're not the exception, and I'm not the exception. Christ died for all. The gospel is unto all and upon all them that believe. What a blessing. Free to everyone, because Christ paid with his blood. Saving faith means I believe God when he says that. And by faith, I, I, I ask him to save me and to take away my sins. Uh, listen, there's nothing physical that happens. You don't boing, get a halo. <laughs> I've often wished that when people got saved, a button would pop out. So you'd know which people were, you know, a little button somewhere. You'd know, oh, yeah, that's a Christian, you know. Sometimes when our kids were little, we'd meet someone and we'd, when we'd walk away, they'd say, Daddy, are they Christians? Well, I'm not sure, son, you know. You just don't always know. But it's by faith. 
We trust Christ, and he changes us from the inside out. The Bible says Jesus was delivered for our offenses. Christ died for our sins, and he rose again. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, you need saving faith. We need faith in God and his word to be saved. We also need faith to live. Several times the Bible says the just shall live by faith. And faith means believing what God has said. What's, what's your definition? Taking God, at it. Taking God at his word and acting upon it. We're trying to learn that in Sunday school. Taking God at his word and acting upon it. You know, God says I'm a sinner. God says without him I'll go to hell. Hey, I better act on that. I better trust Christ as my Savior. And then, as a Christian, I better act on his word when he says, I, I shouldn't lie. I shouldn't steal. I should be a part of a church, and so on. You know, as an individual, I need to submit to the king. And we see Asa's example of faith. Uh, what a blessing. Now, let me ask you this morning. Are you trusting the Lord? Uh, are, you, are you leading your family to trust the Lord? I was reading something the other day, and it, it talked about the difference between a, a Christian spirit in a family and a secular spirit in a family. Is the spirit of your family secular or spiritual? Christian. When you're making a decision, is it based upon God's word and a love for the Lord or success in the world? We've known people where one of their children would say, oh, I want to go to Bible college. Oh, son, you don't want to go to Bible college. Get a real education. You know, their attitude is secular rather than, than Christian. Uh, we need to be careful. Let, let me give you just a couple of things from Ephesians chapter 5. There's a lot of things we could look at here, but four things I'll give you from Ephesians 5, verse 17, that have to do with the spirit of a Christian family. Verse 17 says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. A Christian family is looking to know God's will. Understanding the, the will of the Lord. Looking to know God's will. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Uh, the spirit of a Christian family is it's filled with God's Spirit. It's not a selfish spirit. It's not a, a secular, worldly spirit. It's a Christian. It's the Holy Spirit of God that's, that's leading. Verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, a Christian family has a thankful spirit. We're going to talk more about that tonight, but uh, a thankful spirit. Uh, you know, there's, there's just joy. In verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Uh, Christian spirit in a family means you're going to be submitting to God's word. I remember uh, my dad, you know, giving us instructions from the Bible every once in a while. If something would come up and he'd say, well, here's what the Bible says. He was a godly man. You know, what a blessing it was uh, to have a home that had a, a Christian spirit. And then he, there in Ephesians, he proceeds and lays out how a, a, a mom should do and a dad should do and the children and a boss and an employee and, and so on. How we should live. We need to have a a Christian spirit about our life and our family. We don't need a secular spirit in our family. We need a, a Christian spirit. We need the spirit of God. You see, God says he only blesses faith. Hebrews 11, he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Very important. Now, let me say this, and I think this is important to see. Asa led his nation to revival. He got him back to God's word. He got him back to holiness. He got him back to trusting the Lord. But I think it was 35 years later, Asa had a lapse of faith. Look at, at 2 Chronicles 16, uh, verse 2, for instance. Um, there comes a threat to their nation. And it says, Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and, and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, ben -Hadad, king of Syria. Instead of turning to God, Asa turned to Syria. Asa turned to Syria. And he, he spent God's money trying to get help. Look at 2 Chronicles 16, verse 7. God sends a prophet. At that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, 
Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. God very succinctly speaks to him and he says, Listen, you trusted me before. That was a bigger army then. You trusted me then. And then he, he says something unusual. God says, I am just looking for people to bless. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Listen, God is just looking for people to bless. And let me tell you, I think he has a hard time. <laughs> if, if people are anything like me, I mean, uh, the, our natural tendency is, I don't like anybody telling me what to do. I can work this out myself. God's not, I mean, we have all kinds of uh, things we come up with. God wants to bless us, and he can only bless us by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Uh, so here's Asa. He, he'd been a blessing to his nation. He'd been a blessing to his family. I remember hearing somebody uh, say, they were really concerned. They said, I want to finish well. I want to finish well. Listen, we can trust the Lord here, but are we going to trust him down the track? We need to keep trusting the Lord. Keep living for God. Keep, uh, keeping, uh, keep our eyes on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Asa had a la lapse of faith. Uh, Israel had been blessed. His family had been blessed. When he submitted to God as king. You know, God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your family. It's not going to happen by you going your way. You doing it your way. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I'm waiting, yielded and still. So important for us as individuals and then as part of a family to be yielded to the Lord. You know, our, our theme, Thy Kingdom Come, is about God's power to reign. God's right to be the king over you. Are you born again? Over your family, are you living by faith and obeying God's word? Now, let's go to the Lord in, in prayer this morning. Uh, I don't know, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart about your own relationship to God or about your family or whatever it might be. And as we pray, uh, you take that to the Lord. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the example, both good and bad, of, of this king. And Lord, help us. Uh, to turn from our wicked ways and, and turn to you, to live by faith. Lord, help us to be consistent in our faith. Help us to continually trust you. And Father, if there are those here this morning that are not saved, I, I just pray that they would respond to your Holy Spirit and to your word, and that today would be the day of their salvation. Or for Christians, help us not to back away from our commitment to you. Help us to live each, each day and each moment by faith. Lord, we need your blessing, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.